we go a moment further, let me offer a comment and make a request. Today's commencement marks the end of a long road for our seniors, but for them, the end has come. This end involves some sadness, but also a whole lot of reason to celebrate. I think just, just about everyone in this gymnasium is aware that for faculty member Mark Barron, our teacher, our coach, our colleague, our friend, the end of his journey has come as well. There have been times already this week, and there will be others in the days ahead, to feel much sadness about this. But on this occasion, there's plenty of reason to celebrate as well. This is as the Barron family wishes. So here is my request. Let's imagine, just for a moment, that Mark is walking down this aisle to take the seat that we have saved for him. And let's stand and give him the applause that we would give if he could do that. Hello and welcome to the graduation ceremony for the class of 2011. Although today is a day filled with mixed emotions, we are here to celebrate the graduations of our seniors in the next phase of their lives. As evidenced by the pa over the past two days, without the tireless compassion, strength, and effort of all the members of this community and this school, we'd be nowhere near the level of excellence we are today. The Columbus Academy has provided us with an opportunity to get whatever we want out of life and reach for our highest potential. I have no doubt in my mind that each one of us will go on and achieve something great. So finally, congratulations to class of 2011 and welcome to all of you. We made it. Thank you. I hope you can all imagine the uncomfortable situation of hearing today's graduation ceremony with a speech. As of late Wednesday evening, this match to the immense character. The climate is altered here tangibly. What passages I had once were impish or free-spirited may seem, without any priming, trite, and irreverent. Mr. McKenzie told me yesterday, I trust you've heard the phrase, there's an elephant in the room, he said. There will be one tomorrow. And there is an elephant in the room today. And I suppose it best to address it up front so it's not to leave you all dubious or uncertain. Understand, it would be impossible for me to speak today if I didn't feel there was something worth saying. I spent 36 hours coalescing my thoughts and feelings about Wednesday's events, and without too heavily reiterating Mr. McKenzie's earlier statements, I want to explain my ideological stance for the speech you are about to hear. The situation with Mr. Barron is all of us walking an unsteady tightrope between obtrusive grieving and willful denial, between jubilation for our commencement days and to some extent shame for having been jubilant. At 18 years of age, I don't have any answers. And so I turned to my elders and the peers and those who knew Mr. Barron best, for some semblance of foot. As best I understand, commencement warrants celebration, joviality, and oneness. Qualities, I'm sure, and I have been told Mr. Barron would want represented in today's festivities. The highest testament to his life and legacy is applying even an eighth of the empathy and brotherhood our seniors showed Wednesday evening towards each other. More powerful than grief and anger is keeping Mr. Barron with us in his spirit. By experiencing today as he would, we can laugh, we can applaud, and most importantly, we can flaunt, flaunt, flaunt probably the unity I'm sure he loved about his players, I'm sure he loved about his students and friends and his community as a whole. Let's keep our chins up and diplomas raised high then. Today is a celebration of our seniors' accomplishments, so let's make it seem like one, huh? And let's start with the jokes, I'll try my best. <laughs> seniors, here we are, young, smart, better looking than we used to be, and dressed to the nines. Columbus Academy's graduating class of 2011, as you can see, is a veritable cornucopia of Cabbage Patch Kids' S variety. Some of us are tall, some of us are short, and some of us are short and never stop complaining about it. And, shocking as it may seem, there's more to this class than height difference. So astronomically much more that it's a bewildering task to boil these 90 odd individuals down to an essence, but I'll try. This, as follows, is the senior class. How we got here, where we're going, who's going to take our place, and how we're going to go about it. The senior class of 2011 is a family of equals, and maybe it's because I'm not a fastidious lifer that I can say that. We're a happy family, certainly more Brady than Kardashian, and we can deny that all we want. <laughs> Slamming the people around us and cut a niche for ourselves out of sight, but the most amazing things happen when we work as a team. 
But we don't operate as a team the way the Blue Jackets do. For one, we win. And for two, <laughs> and for two, our class is, rather than with some vague Viking unity, united with a web of history, I'll call it. The experiences you share with that dashing lad and Bonnie last year, left and right, shape your play-like relationship with them. Give it form and color it distinctly from everyone else's life can rock. We've all had a hand in this so-called web of history thing. With every prom date, late night pod party, free period, mammoth cave experience, <laughs> backyard barbecue and smoothie king break, we've colored by numbers of people around us. Understood one another, three some tiny items further. Now, not only do these cave penny bits of experience add up as any office space league felon can tell you, but they mix in novel ways. Just like Pollock's lazy years, the good and bad times slap and scatter your friendship campus until your 13-year experience, Blair and Alicia, Emma and Neha, Neil and Samir, Chris and Kathleen, <laughs> comes gloriously into its own, unique and brilliant. And it's not just cheap metaphor. Well, maybe it is, but that doesn't make it false. As far as abstract expressionist exhibits go, the class of 2011 is at least quite center worthy right now. Like a punch of key to the negative acts approaching zero as X approaches infinity, so too our collective academy experience seniors has both zeroed in on the basic building blocks of our class, the people sitting here today, and graphed out a nifty little curve for the world to look at and say, wow, only I were graduating with that function. <laughs> But the years from pre-K to now were not flawless. For some, less stretch limo and more red eye and bulk head with a five-hour layover in Dallas. But just as it takes time and intense heat to make a cake, it takes time and interpersonal turmoil to build a class. Luckily enough, we've spent give or take 13 years together, so we're pretty much the most delicious cake ever made. Like a golden delight strawberry cake. Now, I arrived in fourth grade, so I cannot talk about lower school in depth, but Let's be honest, how hard could it possibly be to guess? We learned to share, we learned to stop screaming, sit down and dissect owl pellets. We learned that girls are scary and boys throw things they ought not to. <laughs> and we were so happy for a time. Our teachers heard us like sheep and taught us the community and manners we would spend years on learning. The class met less than we cared more about instinct and foursquare than each other. The centennial class needed a kick in the right direction, so the girls went ahead, made everything complicated, and started throwing things. I mean, middle school dragged us all off courtside with its promise of locked lockers, switching classes, and not Spanish. We saw our lives all at once becoming like Zoe 101, and then middle school jumped out from behind a big, colorful faux adult scrim and said, Surprise! No more in puberty! <laughs> we found out quickly the adult world is lame. Homework suddenly involved ones and fours and plus signs. Granted, familiar stuff, but we had to do new things with them, like Solve for X's and use the Pythagorean theorem in new and exciting ways. Science lost its focus on throwing junk at walls and writing, well, it didn't stick, and moved on to the structure of an atom and some half baked explanation of how fairies are not involved in the machination of a microwave. Sex ed came and went, and girls were suddenly terrifying again. And just when things approached their most frantic, we walked into parents' hall. Some emasculated, scarred, and battle weary, others enthused and ready to kick the crap out of a new and exciting high school world. And here ended the drama. Because middle school had us trying our sea legs at responsibility, experimenting with power, and consolidating our basic space between these strange creatures called classmates and our recently acne, viewed with boots, thoroughly jazzed from pre period selves. High school, however, was a different piece club leadership, prom, the dance formerly known as winter formal, student sessions. Senior skip, trip, fun, and prankful. Now I spy a common alley. We may have been dragged along in middle school for the DC trip, we may have seen our classmates at talent shows and ice cream socials, but in high school we were asked two things. To take our place in the class seriously and to create an atmosphere for it to fuse and congeal. Well, here's to a finely congealed class, as the spontaneous Kanye records permeating at least one memorable second of senior trip indicates. We're cool with each other. But what distinguishes us from other graduating classes is our diversity. But no. <laughs> Sorry, that's offensive. Uh, not, but not the pamphlet pushing diversity we often associate with the word, but diversity of interests and of personality. 
Believe it or not, that was the most straight up single gear band geeks actually exist. I know, I attended summer gym once. <laughs> uh, I lost my spot. And I can say with certainty you'd be hard pressed to find a senior musician here today worth calling a band geek, band dweeb, or slide grease monkey. While you're searching, though, consider the prevalence of Greek rappers, portal gun toting sailor boys, diver artists, Latino princes by marriage, and Sean Perusians in Westerville South. They got nothing, and we haven't even played the Hauser part yet. <laughs> Hence, I like us. You should like us too. I totally dig Columbus Academy, where Matt Pickering can ride his motorcycle to school to help light our spring musical, where Brianna Conley can learn the art of Indian and cooking from Tarsha Chandu Papa's mother, and then take on her son in chess, where Infinity Clark can cook in the senior lounge and Frank Benson can film him doing it, where Henry Shore can rap, and where Ruthie Cordray can battle MMA champs Hale Shekelhoff, Joey Vera, and Tyler Navarro with fearsome bowing and a fistful of rosin. And, most importantly, 83 thoroughly sexy individuals can grow up together, learn from each other and their teachers, and then jet off into the future like Marty McFly. <laughs> We're a colorful bunch, and if it doesn't amaze you the intricacy of our class, you straight up weren't paying attention. This is years in the making done right, and it all culminates today. The day we take our next step beyond 88 miles an hour into a future we not only created for ourselves, but also more importantly have in a half Nelson. There will be no dribble here about us as the movers and shakers of tomorrow. It's a late day and a cool dream to imagine a five-year reunion of exclusively CEOs, multi-platinum recording artists, and one world-class unicyclist who still will not talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> Some of us, and it could be you, me, anyone else, will be candlestick makers. But that does not mean our candles will not blow the pants off the bed and bath and beyond the summer selection. <laughs> Now, if our high school career war story book, the moral would be never regret it, never be ashamed. We did the best we could, and we can't do no better and no worse. Sure, the color selection process may have walked us around and pricked our ego with a hot pin, but more important than any Ivy League essay reader smoking a cigar in an easy chair, shaving off applicants like cheddar cheese, <laughs> is just how your essay got into his lap. All of us this year asked the most important question of our lives, and that is, who am I? And for once, we got something like an answer. Some of us are Buckeyes, Redhawks, Wildcats, our regularly colored cow things. And some of us pledge allegiance more to a different sort of fetish, beyond the institution. To science, to the arts, or to watching The Breakfast Club in a cold dorm room and eating day-old pizza. The point is, college is media jargon for life. We approximated future us with an acceptance letter and a deposit, and the institution was irrelevant. We were all unwitting, unspeaking players in a sort of Sims expansion pack. Sims to leave it, if you will. All we have to do is pick a location and a mascot. The future wasn't, and still isn't written. This is our last big show as a class, and I have a hunch you can feel the nervous energy, the sense of loyalty and focus. Without falling too far into cliche, I call it brother and sister. But really, I think we underestimate the amalgamating potential of senior year, and graduation specifically. I would love behind the half-hearted good luck speeches and collegiate pity parties to genuinely being able to say, I'm happy for you. And me. This class here is a family, brothers and sisters, and to see you all dressed up slick today, and to simultaneously revere and to not know what lies in store for all of you, makes me, and should make each of you extremely proud to have laughed with, cried with, and been a part of the class of 2011. So, to the freshmen, wherever the heck you are, I honestly have no idea what to say. You won't remember us. Maybe one or two by name, more if you stepped on the quad in this past year. And perhaps you don't need to remember us, but advice goes a long way, even from phantasms to shadow puppets you'll scarcely recall and one of you gives a speech in a couple of years. Save the time you have here and experience as much as possible. I'm not kidding. Join a club, simply a music club. <laughs> Play a sport and do three plays. You have a whole four years. It's a heck of a long time, so use it. But don't ever forget to get lost in the big old puzzle that is for graduating class. You may not get it now, but you're a living monument of a soon-to-be 13-year history. It's a big deal, and it should be a big deal for you, too. So to the summer, then, I suppose. Grad parties, lemonade, and then the rest of our lives. Let's keep this day sacred and keep our humor about us. It's been real, kids. I love you guys.